Ganondorf in Brawl is an absolute travesty of game design. He's extremely slow in every regard, he is an enormous punching bag and don't even get me started on his recovery in ledge game. If you think Ganon has it bad in later games, you should see him in Brawl. Sure, Ganon might hit hard, but he doesn't hit as hard as in other games overall. Ganon is just an absolute train wreck of a character in this game, which is really unfortunate because he's really cool in my honest opinion. Despite Ganon being an atrocious character in Brawl, his moveset is a mixed bag overall. Ganondorf actually does have a few really good moves, but living up to his bomb tier status, he also has some really bad moves. But I'm not here to talk about those moves today. Maybe another time. What I am going to talk about, however, is one move Ganon has which I find really interesting due to a design quirk it has, which makes the move worse than it should be, and that move is Ganondorf's forward aerial. Ganon clenches his fist forwards, knocking away any opponent it hits. The move has a sweet spot, which in all fairness is pretty strong, as you would expect from Ganondorf. But the move also has a sour spot, which is... Not as strong as you would hope. The sour spot is quite small though, so you will mostly be landing the sweet spot luckily. There does hit hard, but it is balanced by the fact that it is pretty slow and laggy. The move comes out in frame 14, which is quite slow, especially on a character with a 7 frame jump squat. This naturally makes fair quite hard to land, although it isn't too slow overall. The move also has a ton of landing lag at 32 frames, which makes this move extremely punishable on width and on shield. This is one of the laggiest landing forward aerials in the game, only beaten out by Falco's Pathetic excuse with a forward aerial. The move's high startup lag and landing lag are both fully intentional design choices, but the move is also pretty laggy in other areas, and this is where things get weird. The move has 54 total frames in Brawl, which is a lot. This naturally makes the move rather risky off stage, and it leaves Ganondorf rather vulnerable if he is above the stage, as he often cannot do anything else after the fair until he lands. This ending lag is quite high, and the move has more ending lag than it's supposed to, but I'm just foreshadowing. The move also has a really bad auto cancel window, with the move not auto casting until frame 55 which is really really bad. Ganon can't show up auto cancel fair and he can't even full hop auto cancel fair. The only way you can auto cancel fair on flat ground is if you full hop and then double jump fair at the peak of your jump and even then the auto cancel is fairly strict. This means that in most situations you will be getting fair's full landing animation when using the move and just to remind you fair is over half a second of landing lag in brawl. People like to say that fair can't auto cancel at all but this is not strictly true. Fair's animation is 59 frames long and as the auto cancel starts on frame 55, you can auto cancel the fair during the last 5 frames of the animation, but that's still really bad for how long the animation is. This makes you wonder, why did they do this? Why is fair's auto cancel window so astronomically bad? Was this a sick joke from Sakurai to make Ganondorf even worse? The answer is no. Probably. Because this was the cause of what was most likely a programming error. What error did they make? This next part of the video is going to be a bit more technical, but I will do my best to explain it in a digestible way, so strap in. Every animation the Smash series uses internal scripts to determine their properties. Imagine every animation having a checklist where as the animation plays out, the checklist gets filled out. For attacks, this checklist determines the frame data, the hitbox properties, and so on and so forth. There are two different types of times that are used to determine the frame when actions occur. The first timer is called a frame timer. This timer basically says what frame to perform an action. The second timer is called a wait timer. This timer says how many frames to wait before performing an action. All Smash games run at 60 FPS, so let's get that out of the way before moving on. Let's say I create a hitbox on frame 5 and then I put a 6 frame timer on the hitbox afterwards. If I use a frame timer, the hitbox will stop being active on frame 6, meaning it has only one active frame. But if I use a wait timer instead, the hitbox will be active for 6 frames, and then it will stop being active 6 frames later on frame 11. So in this instance, a wait timer is preferable because it will give the hitbox more active frames than a frame timer. One more side note I will mention is that if a timer exceeds the length of an animation, it will simply be ignored once the animation ends. So if an animation is 39 frames long but I made a hitbox on frame 42, that hitbox will simply never come out under any circumstances. It's like if you wanted to buy something from a grocery store after the grocery store already closed. You just can't do it! These two types of times are used interchangeably in the Smash series, with the developers basically using whatever timer they feel like when making a move. But what happens if you use the wrong timer in the wrong place? 
Well, the frame data can get a bit weird, and this is where Ganondorf's fair comes into play. This is the main script for Ganondorf's forward aerial, and this is a recreation I made to make it more easily readable. I will walk you through the script. We start off with a frame timer on frame 7. This timer appears at the beginning of the animation, so it doesn't actually matter what kind of timer is used. So on frame 7, the game activates a flag so that Ganondorf will go into his fair landing animation from this point onwards. If he lands before the flag is activated, the fair will auto cancel, but if he lands after after it is activated, he will get the fair landing lag. This flag is required in order for an aerial to go into its landing animation and have unique landing lag. If this flag is not present, the aerial will just always auto cancel. But out of the 1000 plus aerials within the Smash series, there are a grand total of 3 aerials where this flag is missing and they can always auto cancel. And all those aerials are in the first game, the same game where there is a mechanic to auto cancel aerials at any point. Sorry for that tangent, let's continue on. We next see a frame time on frame 14 which creates the hitboxes on frame 14. We then have a wait timer for 6 frames which is followed by the hitboxes being deactivated. As we start on frame 14 and the wait timer is 6 frames long, this means that the hitboxes are active for 6 frames and then they are removed on frame 20. The important thing is that we are now on frame 20 of the fair animation. We next have a wait timer for 35 frames which deactivates the flag for fair's landing lag, making the move auto cancel. Since this timer started on frame 20 and it is a wait timer, this means that the move auto cancels on frame 55. If the move used a a frame timer instead, it would auto cancel on frame 36, which is a whole 19 frames earlier. The fact that a wait timer is used in this situation instead of a frame timer is really bad, but this next part is where things get really weird. We end off the script with a frame timer on frame 45 which leads to the ability to cancel the move. This should give the move 44 total frames. But wait, I hear you say. You said the move had 54 total frames earlier but now you're saying it has 44 total frames? Were you lying to us earlier? No! I wasn't lying to you earlier. The move does indeed have 54 total frames, even though the script says it should only have 44 total frames. That is a whole 10 extra frames of ending lag. So why is this the case? Well basically, Smash scripts work like a checklist as I stated earlier, but something I did not mention earlier is that everything on the checklist has to be finished in order before it can move on to the next item. So Fair is listed to become cast on frame 45. But there is a problem. On frame 45, the script is still waiting for the move to become auto cancelable, which is another 10 frames away. So until the move can be auto cancelled, the move's animation cannot be cancelled, giving the move an extra 10 frames of ending lag than it is supposed to have. Imagine if you caught a train at 9 o'clock and it was expected to reach your destination at 9.45. You get on the train, but it doesn't arrive at its destination until 9.55, much later than it was scheduled. Why doesn't your train arrive on time? It's because your train was being held up by another train, which was very late because the train driver was given incorrect instructions. That's pretty much what happens when you do Ganon's fare in Brawl. The late auto cancel train is very late and the ending lag train is late because of that. This is what almost certainly makes the auto cancel timer an unintentional mistake as well as making it even more detrimental than it may seem at a first glance. Because it doesn't just make the move auto cancel later than it could have, it downright gives the move more ending lag than it's supposed to have. This single mistake causes two things which make the move worse than it should have been. And all of this happened because the developers used the wrong kind of timer. But with this mishap, you might be wondering if there are more examples of weird timer shenanigans in the Smash series and well, there absolutely are. Every game in the Smash series has various moves which have seemingly unintentional frame data caused by timer and script mishaps. Sometimes these mishaps are beneficial, sometimes they are detrimental, with Ganon's Fair definitely falling in the latter category. But how did this happen? How did they end up using the wrong timer? I think I have an answer for that. In Melee, a wait timer was indeed used for Ganon's Fair auto cancel, with the wait timer only being 14 frames long. This made the move auto cancel on frame 33 in Melee, which actually makes sense. The wait timer was used intentionally and logically, but when bringing the move to Brawl, they wanted to nerf the move so they plan to change the timer to make the move auto counts on frame 36. They changed the timer to be 35 frames long but they must have forgotten to change the type of timer to a frame timer because it still used a wait timer and as we all know that caused problems. But even with my explanation you might still not be convinced that this was a mistake and you know what? It is possible. There is a small chance that you could be correct. Maybe this wasn't an innocent mistake from some intern. Maybe this was deliberate sabotage from Sakurai to make Ganondorf worse and there is actually evidence that this may have been the case. Let's jump to Smash 4. Ganondorf is still here and his fair is still here. Let's see if they fixed the auto cancel window on his fair. No they didn't. Also- <laughs> 
69. It's not like they just ported the Brawl version of the move and called it a day either. They changed the move for the launcher smasher and then they buffed the hitboxes in a later patch, but even though the developers looked at this move at least twice in development, they never fixed the auto cancel window. That's kind of whack if you ask me. But the good news is that the move actually has its intended amount of ending lag in Smash 4 at 44 total frames. This is because the command to make fair cancel is no longer in the same script as the auto cancel window. So the auto cancel window no longer defays fair's ability to be cancelled. So the longer auto cancel window doesn't hurt the move as much as it does in Brawl. You still can't full up auto cancel fair though. And then if we move on to ultimate, they adjusted fair's hitboxes but at launch, they still didn't fix the auto cancel window. How many times are they going to neglect this oddity? Oh wait, they actually changed the timer to the correct timer in 2.0. It took them 11 years but they finally did it. I am so proud of this community. But while they did fix the timer, they did make it so that fair would become auto cancel on frame 45 instead of frame 35. I guess the idea of Ganon full hop auto casting is just too extreme for Sakurai. But now let's go back to Brawl. The game where Fair not only had that terrible auto cancel window, but it also had more ending lag because of that auto cancel window. Since we now know why Fair is such a bad auto cancel window and how it took the developers 11 years to fix it, how do we fix it? I assure you, this is an extremely difficult fix only the most talented of programmers could fix. I did it! All I did was that I changed a 1 to a 2 and that fixed it. No wonder this took professional game developers 11 years to fix. Since fair is so... Easy. ...to fix, what would it have looked like if it actually worked properly? Well, it's quite a bit better. Unsurprisingly, auto cancelling fair is way more lenient with it being easily possible to full up auto cancel fair in a variety of ways. This naturally makes fair better at pressuring opponents from above or on platform since the move is a lot safer to throw out. You don't have to worry as much about landing with over half a second of landing lag. Now you only get a far more reasonable 12th of a second of lag. Not only does this make fair much easier to auto cancel, but it also gives fair 10 frames less ending lag. This naturally makes fair a safer and more versatile edge guarding option, and it also means that if you do a full hop fair with Ganon, you have enough time to double jump before you land, giving you a whole slew of options you simply do not have access to in the actual game. In the real game, you full hop fair and you land with 32 frames of landing lag. That's all you get. Fixing Ganon's fair makes the move a good bit better overall. The far more generous auto cancel and the lower ending lag make the move considerably more versatile and a lot safer. If I were to rank fair a number out of 10, fixing the move's auto cancel timer would at least bump the move up one whole value. But while the move definitely would have been better, it still wouldn't have been anything too crazy. The move still comes out slowly, it still has a ton of landing lag, and it still can't short hop auto cancel. The move is still hard to land and there is still a considerable risk to using it. The move would not become become spammable or an extreme standout in Gandalf's kit, it would simply become a more versatile move which is more flexible and less risky in the right situations. It wouldn't stop Gandalf from being terrible, it would just make him slightly less terrible. Overall, Ganondorf's forward air is not a bad move. It is pretty slow and extremely laggy, but it doesn't come out too slowly, it has decent range, and the sweet spot is pretty explosive for Brawl standards. Fair can be a deadly move in the right situations, but at the same time, it has some pretty glaring flaws, and two of those flaws in particular are a result of a programming error. An error caused by a single bite being the wrong value. It is such a shame. The move is a good bit worse than likely intended due to what is essentially a simple typo. And this same error carried over into future installments, although it had far less severe consequences in those games. But despite everything I have said in this video, stuff like this is why I love talking about this series and especially this game. These kinds of weird imperfections give me something to talk about in these videos and if it wasn't for this error and its ramifications in Brawl, I would not have made this video. So to that, I have to say thank you Sakurai. There may have been mistakes, but those mistakes are one of the reasons why I love researching and talking about this game so much. Thank you to everybody who was involved with making this game. I would have preferred it though if this error was made to Meta Knight's forward area, not Ganondorf's. Thanks for watching. Guys. Just smash the like button, comment and subscribe.